Hello everybody, welcome to another one of these Flow Speed videos with myself, Sam Gregory. Thank you for joining me. Uh, today, I'm gonna to be talking a little bit about still life photography because that is the focus of the Photo Speed features this month. Uh, and we're gonna be talking about that in the studio and also importantly for me, out in the landscape. And I'm gonna be talking to you about this particular image and a couple of others which I made locally. And actually, uh, you're gonna see me out in the landscape talking about this as well as here on the computer and in the studio. Now, just before we get into that, you will probably know if you're following Photo Speed on social media, every month we do a competition and we have a focus theme, and this one, as I say, is still life. You can enter your images of still life, and let's get into what that means in a minute, uh, and you may be in with a chance to win a 50 pound Photo Speed voucher and an A3 print that we produce for you, a really high quality A3 print of your own work. So, do keep up with Photo Speed on socials to take part in the competition. But today, as I say, we're gonna be talking in a way about my interpretation of still life and how you as a landscape photographer, if you are one of those, uh, might want to explore some of this out in the landscape and or if you're at home and you prefer shooting in a little studio setup, I'll touch briefly on that as well. So without any further ado, let's get into it. So firstly, let's get into the, the words still life and what they might mean from a photographic sense. I think for many of us, when we hear that, certainly I do, the first thing I actually think of is in studio. So we all know um, famous pieces of work and photographs which are done in studio of still life, exploring the light, the form, and the shape of certain subject matter that people find and they create and they curate that work within a studio setup, adjusting their lights, you know, fixing their backdrop and everything else. But I think there is another part of still life photography which if any of you are landscape photographers you might maybe feel more connected to and that is to work with uh, what we call found landscapes. Uh, this is just one example here and I've actually got uh, a little example of three underneath here and I'm just going to talk about layups a little bit in another video but I think what I wanted to bring to this topic this month was the point of view of someone who enjoys working in the landscape and who enjoys finding these sorts of found landscape scenes. So I think for it to be valid, difficult word, but I think for it to be valid to still life photography, generally we're talking about smaller subject matter, macro not necessarily, but smaller subject matter, inanimate scenes, inanimate objects, where we find uh, the particular compositions, the shapes, the rhythms, for example, like we've got in these three here. And we, as photographers, seek those out, you know, and photography itself is always a selection, isn't it? A selection of what we put in the frame. Now in these two types of still life photography, in the, in the found, as I would call it, versus the created in studio perhaps, uh, both absolutely equally valid and it just depends what floats your boat and what turns you on to do photography and what excites you to get out and make some work. But as February goes on, we'd really love to see some of your examples of that. And as I mentioned before, just use the hashtag FS still life on Facebook and Twitter. Now, I'm gonna to talk to you about printing uh, this particular image, the one that I have selected here, uh, and I'm gonna just get into that in Lightroom. But before we do, uh, let's just jump out to me actually on the beach looking at this particular scene. It's just a little couple of minute interval, a little bit of background so you can sort of see and feel where I was, and I've got a little tip in there uh, for how to select and how to make image choices on this smaller scale. So just before we jump out to that though, I would say when we get to the printing, there's gonna be a little voucher code you can use. So if you're interested in getting some print paper yourself, uh, that will be there later in the video for you. But now let's just jump to my little two minutes out on the beach, looking at this beautiful little uh, scene here in this composition. Okay, so I actually have my shots up here, slightly precariously balanced uh, on these rocks, as am I, um, but it's fairly dry out here. Obviously, just be careful if you are out on these. But this is the kind of photography I really enjoy doing um, if I have a couple of spare hours and it's a very overcast day like you can see it is today. Um, then what you, you find is that the contrast levels are much easier to deal with. And I'm just concentrating down on these rocks in this area down here. And the aim really is just to try and bring some order. I'll try and focus that. It's just to try and bring some order onto um, onto what we're doing photographically. And I think the main bit of advice I would give you is really just to think about very small scale and really start to look and pay attention to shapes and flow and energy, even of inanimate objects. There's always movement 
And once you find an interesting rock like this, have a good walk around with it and see, you know, what, what works. Now, one other tip I will give you is to use something like this, which is a little viewfinder. And it's really neat just for picking out segments of images. And you can see that's a great example of it. And what it helps you do is find order. Okay, so hopefully you found that useful. Just a little bit of behind the scenes, not a mega production there. But I did just want to pick up on this uh, little tool that I mentioned. This is the view catcher. And it's really neat because you can, you can adjust it to various uh, aspect ratios. So you can see out in the field and you can have it close to your eye, which would obviously be a wider focal length. Uh, and you can push it right far away from you as well, which would be more akin to a longer telephoto. Now, when I've been out on workshops with people, sometimes they say to me, well, I've got a live view, why do I need this? That's a fair point. However, if you're in a bustling city somewhere, or if it's uh, fleeing down with rain or snow, I can very quickly just use this to simulate focal lengths from sort of 24 up to 200. I can simulate any aspect ratio I want, uh, and I can do that without any of my gear coming out of my bag and getting wet. So by the time my actual camera and lens comes out and the tripod comes out, uh, I know exactly what I'm using it for. And when you're navigating small areas of rocks and things like this, as you saw in the video, what's not very good is to be juggling your tripod, juggling your camera all on slippy rocks. You wanna know exactly where you're gonna set up and what angle you're gonna look down at that particular scene from. And this is really invaluable. But without any further ado, I just wanna get quickly into the image on Lightroom. We're gonna then print it out. Uh, and also I'm gonna mention a little bit of a discount code that you might wanna use for some lovely photo speed papers as well. And I just wanted to show you a couple of very simple things, just so we've got the whole thing from idea, out in the field, preparing for print, print. Uh, and uh, we can have a quick look at that. I'll only be a couple of minutes. So what I just wanted to show you uh, the original image, uh, you, as you can see, is a little bit more washed out, a little bit lighter toned. And that's simply because I use the um, the neutral setting on, on the Nikon Z7 so that the raw comes in uh, without any, um, any major additions of sharpening, colour, contrast, whatever it might be. You find in your picture modes, uh, it does mean that your uh, initial file looks flat and sometimes it looks flat when you're out in the landscape on the live view or whatever it might be but you just have to know that you're going to bring that up during the edit and I just find it's a more natural way to for me to edit uh, knowing that everything I'm adding is what's going in and nothing else on top so as you can see here uh, that's the final edit which is much closer actually to how it was in reality that slightly darker slightly more contrasty look and you can see I've achieved that just by some very uh, basic changes here to the exposure, the contrast, uh, bringing the highlights down, etc. And as it is a textured scene and the, the rock has texture obviously within it, fine detail, um, I have but a little bit of these uh, presence tools here, the texture, the clarity and the dehaze. I, I go quite easy on those because they're pretty, pretty strong stuff. But certainly from the point of view of the print, uh, I would just double check those and see how much I could quote unquote get away with as well as sharpening as well. But we're not here to do a major edit deep dive. What I did just want to point out with still life images like this in the landscape and found images in the landscape, sometimes you have to think quite carefully about your depth of field and your focus possibilities. And that may involve a little bit of focus stacking sometimes. On this occasion, however, because of the angle I was at, and because of the lens I was using, um, I've managed to basically shoot this at f16 uh, without any need for multiple image stackings, and it's still nice and sharp and in focus uh, all around the frame. Just softens a little bit in these corners, but that's okay, I'm not too worried about that. If they were super sharp, in a weird way, it would be slightly disturbing for me anyway. To just point out, I think it works quite nicely in black and white as well. A slightly different edit for the black and white white version, uh, but I'm going to print it and talk about it in colour. Now just while we're here on the computer there are a couple of other images which I, I took around the same time, uh, this one and indeed uh, this one here which is more straight down from above on, on our initial rock area. And just you know commonly when you're working in this way with still life uh, a small scene like this that's less than a metre in size can occupy your mind for a good half an hour of looking at it from every little angle. Even slight changes six inches up, down, left, right, above, below will, will, will 
uh, give you a different composition and a different feel and balance of energy within the frame. And you can think about how much percentage of the frame am I giving to certain tonal types, you know, lighter, darker, where are the shadow areas, where are the lighter areas, are there things that are pulling my eye left or right. And I think of all of these, this is the three, uh, this is the one that I do have a slight preference for. I just think compositionally it probably works best. Uh, a couple of these sort of repeating lines of this one uh, and this down here. And obviously there's a bit of a general energy point towards this zone here as well, where there's some cool shape. So that's the one uh, that we're going to jump out and print. And I'll jump to that and then we'll have a final wrap up as we close the video. So now as we jump over to the print module, uh, I always just do this in the single image uh, contact sheet uh, and then just make sure your borders are all sorted and your margins and just adjust the cell size to whatever you wish. Now you can see I've just pushed the height up so it's not relevant here and I'm just going to set the width to 26 because uh, that's the size I know I want it to be. Uh, and we would, as usual, just check our details down here in the print job. And today I'm going to be using platinum etching on my trusty Canon Pro 300. Platinum etching is probably my number one choice of photo speed paper. It is gorgeous for these colours and when there's a little bit of texture like there is here as well. I think it works really, really well. I'm going to untick the print adjustment, had that on from a previous image. And uh, obviously the perceptual relative we would have taken care of normally in our soft proof. But it doesn't make a huge difference here because everything is uh, within gamut anyway as well. Just before I hit the print button though, I just wanted to alert you to a discount code that you can use if you fancy buying some photo speed paper. FS YouTube 15 gets you 15% off any of your orders on photospeed.com website. Now, if you're in the uh, rest of the world, or specifically America, I know that the FOSB team have set up a new cheaper flat rate uh, postage cost to the US. So if you are one of our viewers from the United States of America, you can still obtain photo speed paper uh, really cost efficiently through the FOSB website. And if you use your discount there, you'll get 15% off as well. And I, as I would say, I would really recommend platinum etching. Uh, and there's a whole host of other papers which we've done some comparison videos on the channel recently and you can jump over and view those videos in your own time. But for now, I'm going to print this out. We'll have a quick look at the final print and wrap up today's video about FS Still Life. And here is the final print, uh, and I'm really happy with this. As you can see, there's a set of two or three round there. And often I find when you're working in these sorts of style and this sort of way of seeing and looking, it can be very relaxing. It can be very uh, good for your brain to seek out these sorts of scenes and try and make order in an otherwise sort of slightly chaotic or, or mundane place, which, which it could feel like to many photographers, but there is always something interesting. There's always patterns, there's always lines and shapes, as I mentioned, within the landscape. Uh, and I'm really happy with this particular print. And what's really cool is I only went out and shot because I had this FS still life thing in mind. And hopefully you guys might find it a bit of an inspiration as well. Now, just before we go, uh, I did uh, allude at the beginning that I was gonna talk about uh, working in panels like this as well. And what I'm actually going to do next uh, week, uh, the next video from myself anyway, is going to be talking about how to set up in Lightroom uh, little panels like this really easily in the print module. I know it can be a pain and I've seen a lot of people struggle. I've struggled in the past with Lightroom print module, um, but there's a neat kind of way around this uh, where you can set up a page to be uh, any combination of images you want, but really quickly and really easily and they will print uh, equally around the page, which is obviously what you want to happen. So do join me next time. Uh, subscribe to us here on the PhotoSpeed channel and uh, I shall be with you again where we'll talk about that video of setting up in the print module. But for now, thank you for watching and I'll speak to you all again very soon.